my dears so in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can create the graphics that you need for uploading your design to Spoonflower so you do have two different options today when we go ahead and do this the first option would be to create a border print and then in I can also show you how an all over print can work so in today's video I'm just going to show you the border print one so as you can see, I have GIMP open here. This is what I like to use in order to create my Lolita prints. Now, someone who uh, knows the difference between GIMP and Photoshop would probably point out the fact that GIMP ha always has had more issues with stuff like CMYK um, compatibility, and that's something that's usually uh, easier to do in something like Photoshop. But I have found that as long as I get a sample printed, which you'd have to do anyway. As long as you get a sample of your work printed through Spoonflower and you can see how the colors come out, then you should be pretty much good to go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open my border print. So as you can see here, I saved the file as XEF because that typically allows for me to be able to save the file with layers intact. If you save it as a P JPEG or a PNG, you won't be able to have layers. With PNG, you can have transparencies. Uh, with JPEG, you cannot. It flattens the image. So uh, also with JPEG, you get less quality with the final result if you save it that way. So I typically re recommend saving as PNG all the way up to the end before you're going to go ahead and upload. I do believe Spoonflower allows for PNG files. If not, just save it as the highest quality possible JPEG. Okay, here we go, here's the layers. So these files will be pretty large, and so having a computer that can handle it is really important. Make sure you don't overload your computer with a bunch of other things. If you do YouTube videos like I do as well, just make sure that you have enough space and things like that, and you don't have a bunch of other things open and running in the background. So make sure you've got a computer that can really handle this, and then you should be good to go. So I'm gonna turn off these layers, and I'm just gonna go, we're gonna go through it as if you're making this from scratch. Okay, so when you're starting out making any kind of design for spoon flour, the first thing that's really important is making sure you have your measurements correct. So as you can see here, I keep the resolution at 200 DPI, or as it says here, it says pixels an inch, but it's basically DPI, dots per inch. So I make it 200 DPI, the resolution, because it just guarantees to me that the quality is going to be really good. And even though Spoonflower only needs it to be at 150 DPI, typically print quality, like if you were printing like a, a photo or, or a comic, or something like that, or if you're printing something that you design, like a like a graphic design, like a like a piece of graphic art or something, you typically want it to be like 300 DPI, so <laughs> like three times the amount that you'd want here. So I put it at 200 DPI because I just like my stuff to be a little bit higher quality than 150 DPI. This also allows to, for me to feel like if it gets crunched down a little bit to meet the requirements of spoon flour, then uh, it'll still, the quality will still be really good. Because, you know, if you start with something like 100 DPI, when it calls for 150 DPI and you decide last minute, okay, I'll just blow it up and make it a little bit bigger, that can be more problematic because it can cause things like blurring, pixelation, all that. But if something's bigger, it can always go smaller and the quality usually looks better. So I like to do 200 DPI. Now, if your computer is just not handling it and if you need to work at lowest possible capacity, then 150 DPI is what you can, you can do. The other thing too here is I have it 5200 by 5200 pixels. Now, it doesn't have to be this amount, but I actually, whenever I do this, I always look at the size in inches. So 26 by 26 inches. So I picked this because this is a border print that I'm going to be repeating over the course of a, a length of a yard of fabric. So 26 inches guarantees that I have it long enough for, let's see, 52, okay? So when you typically get a yard on spoon flour, what I would say, not just any yard, because the yardage, like the length can differ. So typically a yard is 36 inches by however long that specific fabric type is. And what I mean by that is something like the poly crepe de chine, I believe is like 
you know, I'm, something like the poly crepe de chine is like somewhere between 52 and 55 inches. So it's 36 by 52 to 55 inches. Now the satin that I chose to get Aurora Valentine printed on was 36 by 52 inches. So what I did was since I knew that it would be 52 inches, I split that number in half. And the reason why I did that is because let's just pretend like this was 52 inches right here and that this was by by 36 inches okay the reason why I split it in half is because we're making a border print and the way you want your border print to print when you're done is you're gonna have your border down here for your art and your border flipped reverse upside down up here okay so this middle seam right here is half the size of the fabric so this is tw you'd say this is 26 by 36 inches right here okay we're just speaking figuratively. <laughs> so this little segment we're working on, I'm going to show you how this will repeat and how it's going to look when you're done and why this works. But basically that's the concept is it's all math when you're working with Lolita dresses. Weirdly enough, it is, it's all, that's how I used to do all my alterations. That's how I used to design all my prints. It all comes down to the measurements. So like I said, you want to split whatever number of fabric in half. So if you order the poly crepe de chine and it's say like it's 55 inches, let's just say like it is 55 inches by 36 six inches. You don't have to worry about the, the, the width so much because however, as long as your yardage is repeatable, like as long as your print, like your design doesn't bleed over into the 36 inch, whatever, it doesn't matter because it's repeatable because it'll, your design only needs to be 36 inches or if you want to design just part of it, 18 inches or whatever. So that, that number doesn't matter as much. The m number that matters is going to be the width because uh, or is going to be this lo the longer number because that's the number that won't change when you buy yardage it'll always be something like 36 by 55 or it'll be 72 by 55 so that 55 number is important okay so so say like we're getting the poly crepe machine and we know it's 55 inches in length you divide that number by 2 27.5 is going to be the number you're going to want uh, for creating your border print so that would be the it'd be 27.5 by 36 and then you'd put your little border print right here okay so for example if i wanted to come into here and i, and I was sizing it i would change this number 27.5 okay and then this number would also become 27.5 that doesn't matter so much like i said you'll see you'll see what i mean now that you have your sizing down, you know the DPI, all that, make sure, like I said, you're constantly saving your files for some weird reason with GIMP. It is a free program for people to use, but the thing that, I love it, but the one thing that really bothers me about it is that sometimes it will randomly crash. Now, I use GIMP 2.6, this might be why it randomly crashes, but I did have issues with 2.8 when I was using it as well. The reason why I used 2.6 and 2.8 was because at the time I had an older tablet, and the older tablet only worked with the 2.6, it did not work with 2.8. And also, whenever something gets updated and new, I'll be honest, I don't like having to learn the new things all over again, so I just like to design them here in GIMP. Um, if you do have a tablet, something like a Galaxy S10 or whatever, you could also design these prints in Medibang. Medibang is what I used to make my ET Girl webcomic. It is very good. It, it holds very large capacity uh, images. You can, you can work in very large sizes and not have to worry about it overloading your tablet at all. So if you're using a tablet, Medibang would be the way that I'd recommend it, but the, but the procedure would be the same. So you could do it with layers, you could save it with layered files, things like that. I am designing a repeatable border print and it's just 26 by 26 for now. I decided to stick with a square because it was easy and I knew it could be repeatable. So what I started off with here was a gradient to get, this is my base basically. This is the base of what I want Aurora Valentine to look like. And then what I did on another layer here was I added stars. So I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see a little bit. <laughs> the stars, from far away it looks real like, you know, like you can't really see these details, but the details matter when you zoom in because that's what it's going to look like when it prints. So as you can see here, I can zoom pretty far in before you see all these little hazy stars and things like that. And literally I just, I have a tool on here on GIMP that allowed me to put the stars. It's right over here under brushes. So I used this one right here. This one comes with GIMP, it's this little X. 
And then I also created the star one, which if you ever want to create a, uh, your own one, you can just go right here. You can go right here. This little edit brush down here. And that's how you can go ahead and you can make your own brush. So if you want to make a star or anything like that, you can do that there. Okay, so now you, so you've got your base laid down, you got your gradient, you got your stars. Then what I did was I overlaid some clouds. Now this is where I use uh, patterned brushes. Pattern brushes are great for things like that. So I put them on transparency a little bit originally. Now it says the opacity is complete, but what I did was the transparency was over here when I was actually using the brush, like the opacity right here. I changed that. So I made the opacity less so these clouds were a little bit see-through and I just layered them on top of each other. And as you can see, it looks like a pretty little um, starry sky. <laughs> I so, uh, and because like I said, up here is where your border, like, not, sorry, your border print is going to be here, but this is where your pa fabric's going to, to uh, like that's the seam of where everything you design here is going to get flipped upside down and it's going to be put over here. And I'll explain what I mean with that in a second. But because of that, you want it to be like, you want your decorative stuff to be kind of light up here so it can blend into the seam area. And then your you can go heavier with the border stuff down here at the bottom. So th then I added this cute little cloud heart in. <laughs> He's over here on the side just in case. Yeah, uh, I thought it'd be cute to add that little touch in there. It's a very typical thing in Lolita fashion to like, you can really just sit there all day and look at, at the dresses and the different things they put in the art. And I think it's just so beautiful. It's like looking at just, you know, beautiful Baroque art is what it reminds me of. It's not all that way. I know some of it's more cutesy graphics, but even the cutesy graphics, there's always little stories and little things in them that you can look at the dress a few times and be like, oh, I didn't notice that. So that's why I went ahead and put those things in there. Now I did really like the way this heart looked. So I repeated it. As you can see, I, I, I duplicated the layer, which you can do right here with this button, duplicate. And then what I did was I just shrunk it down and then I used the side the this rotate tool to make it so it didn't look exactly the same. And then I went ahead and put another one right here, a larger one. And then at the bottom here, I went ahead and put little border. So like I said, this is this is how I know where the bottom of my print's gonna be. There's going to be about like, I, see how I left a little space right here? Let's see if I can show you guys. See how I left this little space of blue underneath this? It's because I'm not exactly sure if Spoonflower is going to cut it off like right at the border. And you don't want to put something that you designed very, like at the very bottom. Like you wouldn't want to put it like right, right up against the bottom of your design. Because if Spoonflower prints it and then say like it just cuts into it, like, like the way that it prints, it ends up cutting off that bottom part. It's not going to look good. So you want to leave a little bit of space. It also it can be a good guide for yourself when you're hemming the bottom of your dress. Like say like you want to put a trim down there or if you just want to hem it in general. And that way you don't have to, like you're basically leaving an inch to fold over to hem the bottom of your dress and it's not going to cut into your pretty design. So I recommend that whatever cute design you have that you want to put along the bottom, make sure you leave just a one inch of space there as sort of like your room for error. Now we're going to add all our little frames. Okay. So here are the little frames. Now I designed these uh, and and I, I put them together. I, I, I more or less image collaged them together. They were things um, that were from the graphics fairy. They were their old vintage style art that is uh, free to use that you can modify and things like that. And I went ahead and added my little truly darling uh, name in there and then I had this there was this pretty rose border and I decided to pick my favorite little angel baby pictures and put them in the border prints. So as you could see before earlier, I showed you I had a few of, I had a few ones in there <laughs> that I never ended up using for the print. I ended up settling on these four because I really liked these four. But uh, the, basically they're on transparent backgrounds here. That's really important when you're working on your design. And they are movable too. So I can decide if I want them to be all in a row or I can decide if I want them to be staggered the way they were. Now, also, if you want to make sure that your staggered ones line up, you can push this little button right here, adjustment or alignment tool, and then you can select one and then hit shift, select the other one you want, and then push this little button and it'll center them. So that way you know for sure that the pictures you have are centered. 
Now, in order to make sure the spacing here and here to here and here is the same, that's kind of, you got to kind of eyeball that. That's usually what I do is I just eyeball it. And always make sure that you leave a little bit of space on each side so that way the border print is going to actually repeat itself. As you can see, this little angel baby is higher up than this one, and that's because when it repeats, the this moon one will be right next to her on the low end here, and it'll just go up, down, up, down, up, down the whole way. So it's perfectly done. All right, so that is the first part here of showing you guys how this works. I'm going to go ahead and show you now more of the layout procedure of what to expect in an with another file uh, before we go into actually going on to Spoonflower, and I will show you what it looks like when you upload it so you can see how it's going to print, okay? So thank you guys for checking out part one of this series. I will be uh, back in another video, and I will be showing you a little bit further about how to do this. If you would like any of my Truly Darling fabric, I, ha I currently have it up for sale on my shop for a limited period of time, just my design only, Kim Darling designs only, it, because I wanted to make these things available for sale. I wanted, I've been wanting to make them something where, you know, if you had an idea for one of my Truly Darling prints and you wanted to make your own dress, you'll be able to have the opportunity to do that uh, for a short period of time. Also, if you want to get extremely, extremely discounted fabric, I have some in the links below in my eBay shop. I have a few extra yardage of some old Truly Darling designs on some old, um, on some fabric. Uh, I actually have an entire yardage of the Wild Swans that never got used for anything because it it had a, like one minor error on it with it the coloration of the backgrounds were a little bit more yellow as opposed to white cream that I wanted. So it's this entire, uh, I think it's like two, two or three yards of fabric that's just not even getting used and it's, it's highly discounted and that's available on my eBay shop. So if you want to be able to get that, you can go ahead and check that out. I am still running a uh, giveaway for a pair of cute milk socks if you want to be able to win those make sure you're following me on instagram and make sure you're subscribed to this youtube channel go ahead and drop me a comment in the section below and you will be eligible for that giveaway so i will probably be announcing it the giveaway in the next month or so i haven't decided exactly when i'm gonna wrap up the giveaway um it's taken me a while just to come out with this video even I know that this topic generated a lot of interest, so I know how important it is to be able to get it out there and show it to people. So I've been just kind of dragging my feet on it a little bit. So <laughs> I will see y'all next time. Have a great day. Bye.